Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back to chapter 6.1. Now that we have covered phase 1 and 2 of the manufacturing process, now let us continue with phase 3 and 4, which is to turn silicon wafers into solar cells and solar cells into solar panels. This video series is proudly sponsored by RS Grassroots Education. You can refer to the Design Spark article link below to find out more materials related to this video. Now, with the silicon wafer ready, we are ready to enter into phase 3, which is to turn silicon wafers into solar cells. The first step involves processing the wafer surface. The unprocessed p-type wafer usually consists of damaged surface at the top and bottom of the wafer due to the sawing process earlier. This damaged surface can be removed by the process of etching then, a further texture etching process is performed at the top of the wafer. This creates pyramidal-like structures that gives another chance for reflected rays to enter the solar cell. This decreases the overall reflection of the solar cell. Now, in order to form a PN junction, we need to dope the top surface of the P-type wafer, N-type, with N-type dopants, such as phosphorus, to achieve a PN junction. This can be done by a multitude of methods, but one of the most common ones is to use a quartz furnace. The cells to be diffused are loaded into a quartz boat and placed in a quartz tube alongside a solid source such as phosphorus for N-type doping. During the heating process, Phosphorus vapor is produced and uniformly deposited onto the wafer surface. We now have a wafer like this. The end dope edges are first removed. Then, an entity reflection coating is deposited onto the wafer. Next, Front metal contacts are deposited onto the wafer front by means of screen printing. In this process, a paste containing the metal contact is forced through the openings of a screen onto the wafer. This forms the anode metal contacts that we usually see in solar cells. Next, using the same screen printing method, aluminum and metal back contact like silver is deposited onto the back of the solar cell. The final process is called firing. This involves placing the solar cell into an infrared furnace. The heat causes the front metal contacts to diffuse into the anti-reflective coating to form contact with the end layer. Furthermore, aluminum is diffused into the end dope layer to form a heavily p dope back surface view. There we have it, a solar cell ready to generate electricity. We are now ready to enter into phase 4, where we assemble solar cells together to form a solar panel. The very first step of phase 4 is to electrically connect the solar cells together, either in series, in parallel, or both. A typical solar panel usually consists of all the cells connected in series, such that it produces a large enough voltage to charge a battery. In this example, 36 solar cells are connected in series via a 4x9 matrix. These cells are connected by thin copper ribbons called tabs. The tabs connect the solar cell by having one end soldered onto the top bus bar of one solar cell, which is the negative contact, and another end soldered onto the bottom positive contact of the other cell. This process is repeated for all the solar cells in the matrix. We are now ready to put it all together. The solar cell matrix is usually encapsulated with EVA to protect the solar cells against environmental degradation. On top, we have a glass plane to provide the rigidity of a solar panel. A back layer made of composite plastic is added to prevent humidity effects and also provide electrical isolation. 
rows of connected cell matrix is first transferred to an EVA sheet that is already placed on top of a glass plane. The rows are electrically connected together, and then the bottom EVA sheet and back layer is added. This entire stack is fed into a lamination chamber to laminate all layers together. With all the layers laminated together, the final step is to add an aluminum frame to allow easier handling, a silicone gasket to allow for thermal expansion, and also a junction box to connect the terminals. And there we have it, our finished solar panel, ready to be packed and shipped to customers. Here is a summary of all four phases and their individual sub-processes. That's it guys for chapter 6. As you can see, the manufacturing process of solar cells is not that straightforward. In fact, manufacturing solar cells require a huge amount of energy by burning fossil fuels. However, this is still much better for the long run, because in the long run, it takes about two years for solar cells to generate back the electricity that was used to make them. Beyond that, the energy is practically clean and free. To end the first section of this video series, we will learn how we can connect solar panels to devices to form what is called a PV system, and also how investment decisions are made in the solar cell world. That's it for now. Take care and goodbye.